Hi everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. I hope that you are all well and reading good books. For those who have watched my videos before, welcome back. For those watching for the first time, thanks for checking out my channel. If you are interested in diverse reading or Canadian literature, then please hit subscribe and stick around. Today I am going to be going through my first book haul of 2021. I have 21 books to kick off the book hauls of 2021, and as usual, they are all diverse when it comes to authors, genres, and topics. I hope to get to all of these at some point, but we will have to see how long it takes me. Hopefully there will be uh, something on this list that interests you. So let's get started. Um, first up is a book I received through one of my subscription boxes. It's Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. This is an adventure story that takes place in 1950 when Marjorie Benson decides to leave her job and travel to New Caledonia to find a golden beetle. It sounds like a delightful story of friendship and dreams. The next book I became interested in because I read Hidden Valley Road um, by this author last year and really liked it. So this time I'm going to read Lost Girls by Robert Kolker. This is a story of a true life search for a serial killer in Long Island. It is a story about the world of online escorts and the dangers behind it. Up next is a book I'm interested in because I like chocolate or rather I love chocolate and I eat breakfast. Uh, Chocolates for Breakfast by Pamela Moore was first published in 1956 and it is a coming of age story about 15 year old Courtney who splits her time between Manhattan and LA. The author Pamela Moore died by suicide when she was 26 in 1964 and her son had connections to Emma Straub who some of you may know as another author and together they were able to get this book published. The fourth book is called Small Silent Things by Robin Page. Um, first, I just love this cover. And second, this appeals to me because one of the characters, Simon, is a Rwandan refugee. And as many of you already know, Rwanda is important to me. And I think in one of my last book hauls, I talked about a few books that I will be reading during the 100 days of mourning and remembering this year. So as Simon begins a relationship with Jocelyn, who also has a traumatic past, the two of them must find a way out of their dark histories. And I'm really intrigued by this one. I'm intrigued by this next novel because I have heard a few booktubers talk so highly of it. And that is Parakeet by Marie Helen Bertino. It sounds amusing and unique. Uh, a bride is about to get married by her dead grandmother visits her through a parakeet telling her not to go through with the marriage. So I'm looking forward to reading this to see what all of the hype is about. Next is Bellevue Square by Michael Redhill and this is a thriller with an interesting concept. It's about Jean Mason who has been told that she has a doppelganger that is in Kensington Market and a doppelganger is someone who looks like you. And Jean becomes curious about this. So she tries to find the person who supposedly looks like her and she kind of becomes obsessed with finding this person. Brooklyn Girls is the first book in a series by Gemma Burgess uh, or Burgess. This is about five 20 something year old uh, friends who are navigating the world of Brooklyn. And this book centers around Pia, who is unemployed and has no money. She decides to take on a food truck business while there are many shenanigans with her roommates that ensue. This next book I have been wanting to read forever, so I'm glad to finally have it in my hands. Let the Great World Spin by Irish writer Colin McCann is about eight people who witness a man walking a tightrope between the World Trade Centers in New York City in 1974. This next book is a poetry book by Thomas King called 77 Fragments of a Familiar Ruin. And this is a collection of 77 poems that are all um, a eulogy for what we have squandered. Uh, 
and a reprimand for all we have allowed, and some suggestions for what might still be salvaged. And I love Thomas King, and I haven't read any of his poetry, so I'm looking forward to, to checking this one out and see what I've been missing. Next is Event Tide by Swedish author Therese Bowman, and translated by Marlene de Largy. Um, this is about Carolina Anderson, who has just broken up after a long relationship. She's in her 40s and she enjoys her work as an art professor at Stockholm University. Event Tide is a novel of ideas about love, art, and solitude in our time and the distorted standards to which women are held in their relationships and their careers. Next up is a memoir by T. Kira Madden called Long Live the Tribe of Fatherless Girls. And this is a memoir, it's a coming of age story and a reckoning with desire as a queer biracial teenager amidst the fierce contradictions of Boca Raton in Florida. And this one sounds like it covers a lot of timely topics for our time. And another memoir in my hall is The Dragons, The Giant, The Women by Weyatu Moore. When Weyatu uh, Moore turns five years old, her father and grandmother throw her a huge party at their home in Monrovia, Liberia. Um, but all she can think about is how much she miss misses her mother, who is working and studying in New York. So before she can join her mother, war breaks out in Liberia, and the family is forced to flee their home, walking and hiding for three weeks. And they eventually make their way to the U.S. and then must adjust to an entirely new culture. So I think this one would be interesting. The next book I was drawn to because of the cover. It's the first book in the Dove Pond series, uh, The Book Charmer by Karen Hawkins. I just think it's beautiful. I think the cover looks you know, charming. And when I read a bit of the blurb, um, I just thought that bookworms will be so intrigued. So... It says, Sarah Dove is no ordinary bookworm. To her, books have always been more than just objects. They live, they breathe, and sometimes they even speak. When Sarah grows up to become the librarian in her quaint southern town of Dove Pond, North Carolina, her gift helps place every book in the hands of the perfect reader. Recently, however, the books have been whispering about something out of the ordinary, the arrival of a displaced city girl named Grace Wheeler. So I thought that sounded very interesting um, and again I just couldn't help but pick this up because of the cover. Next up is A Dream About Lightning Bugs, A Life of Music and Cheap Lessons. This is a memoir by Ben Folds who is a singer-songwriter. He shares stories from his childhood, his influences in his music and the lessons that he's learned in life. Song of a Captive Bird is a historical fiction novel by Iranian-American author Jasmine Darznik, and this story is inspired by the poet Forg Faragza, I hope I'm saying that correctly, who grew up in Tehran, uh, being told that she should be quiet and modest, and in 1950, Forg runs away from her forced marriage and finds a way to live by her own rules. The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain uh, takes place in 1970. The main character is Caroline Sears. She's pregnant and learns that her unborn baby may have a birth defect. And this is devastating news because it seems that there's nothing they can do. And then a few people tell Caroline that there may be a chance to help her baby. So we'll see how that goes. Little Big Love by English author Katie Regan is one of the novels I hope to get to soon. Um, in this one, Liam disappears without a trace, leaving his wife, Juliet, and his 10-year-old son, Zach. When Juliet admits to Zach that his father is the only man that she's ever loved, Zach decides that he's going to find his father. Um, so I, this is kind of a bit of a mystery and maybe a little bit of a romance, uh, but it's definitely about family and family dynamics. The Girl You Left Behind by Jojo Moyes takes place in Paris during World War I, so Sophie Lefebvre's husband is fighting at the front and Sophie is forced to serve the Germans every evening at her hotel. When the new commandant sets his eyes on a portrait of Sophie, which was painted by her husband, there's a dangerous obsession that starts. And then almost a century later, 
Liv Halston has Sophie's portrait hanging in her home, and it was a gift from her husband before his sudden death. So somehow these two women's lives are connected. I won this next book in a giveaway and received it from the publisher's Amazon Crossing. I was hoping to get to it in January, but time ran out, so hopefully I will get to it soon. Your Story, My Story is by Connie Palmen, who is uh, from the Netherlands, and the novel is translated by Eileen J. Stevens and Anna Asbury. And I'm so excited to read this story. It's a historical fiction novel about the poet Ted Hughes, who was also the husband of Sylvia Plath. And this book is about their seven-year relationship when before Plath took her own life in 1963. One of the romance books that I'm hoping to read in the next couple of months is The Lost Love Song by Minnie Dark. Um, Diana is a concert pianist and has written a song for her fiance Ari. When tragedy strikes, the song lives on and touches the lives of people from around the world. So I kind of liked that concept. Lastly is a historical novel, The Chanel Sisters by Judith Little. This novel is about the lives of Gabrielle or Coco Chanel and her sister Antoinette. And I actually know very little about them. So I'm looking forward to this to learn a bit more about these women who, you know, found a way to be successful in the world at a time when that would have been very uh, difficult to do. For those of you who saw my latest lockdown and literature video, uh, you might remember that I mentioned that my dogs are always in my videos, whether you see them or not. And what I should have said is that my boy Jax is always in my videos. <laughs> Pandy probably about 95% of the time. So I'm just going to move here so you can see what this is normally like. Let's see if you can see him there. He lays flat. He's asleep. Not snoring. At least not yet. But he has found his spot for a little while. <laughs> so they are always behind me usually sleeping. As always, I will leave a list of all of the books I mentioned in this video in the description box below. Please let me know in the comments if you have read any books on this list or if there are any that interest you that you would like to read. What books have you received recently? I would love to know. And what are you looking forward to reading? I look forward to chatting with you in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And don't forget to make every day an adventure.